Hi, I'm Tim Camp. In past videos, I've shown how to make alcohol stoves from these three beverage cans. From the Foster's beer can, I made an extra large stove. From the 12 ounce beverage can, I made a large. From a 7.5 ounce mini can, I made a medium alcohol stove, but one can I haven't used in a video yet, the juice can. And from it, I can make a small alcohol stove. So that's going to be the subject of today's video. Let me get set up and we'll get started. Step one is always the same for me. I scrub the paint off the part of the can that's going to show in the finished alcohol stove, in this case, about the top inch and a half. And I do it with an unopened can. I use a green scotch bright pad wrapped around the can and just scrub it back and forth in my hands like this. On a small can like this, it only takes about a minute. It doesn't take very long and I pay a special attention up under the rim. Personal preference, I think bare aluminum looks better on the finished stove than the paint. That's all there is to it. Now I would open the can, empty the contents, and rinse it out as I've done to this one. Next I want to prepare the burner part of the stove, the top. I need to cut the top out of the can. This is the type of stove that primes from this open bowl, so I need to remove the top, but I need to leave the rim intact. And I haven't found a can opener yet that will do that. So I use a brand new utility knife blade and score around in the bottom part of this channel. couple of revolutions and the knife will start breaking through and at that point I would just deliberately cut into the top and start cutting around that channel. The aluminum on these juice cans is about the thinnest aluminum there is so it's not very difficult. Now that inner rim is going to be jagged, you can see some sharp bits. So I use needle nose pliers to push those back and smooth out the edge. Better. Now speaking of this upper rim, If you can see on these two cans, there is a difference. This rim is straight up and down. This rim has a shape. It's formed. This can will warp the first time you burn it. This one will not. I always look for the cans that have this formed upper rim. Next, I need to put 16 burner jets around the top of the can. And for most alcohol stoves, I measure down a half inch. But for this smaller can, I only need to measure down three eighths of an inch. It doesn't need as much thermal feedback from that much metal exposed above the burner jets. So only three eighths of an inch. I've got a couple of ways I can do it. I use these templates. Some of them are quarter inch, some are eighth of an inch thick. So I could stack a quarter inch and an eighth inch template together and use those, but not everybody has those. So instead, you can use a pencil in a book. So if you've got your 
U.S. Army Survival Manual FM 21-76 handy. Open it to page A5 where it talks about vipers. Put your pencil on that page. Turn the can on its top and rotate it against the pencil point. And that makes a nice line three-eighths of an inch down from the top. If you use some other book, you'll have to figure out what page to put it on. And I want 16 evenly spaced holes around this line. So I always use what Little Bitworks calls a protractor. And I've got a link to his video in the description below. But I'll show you how to do it here. Strip of paper taped into a tube that can easily slide on and off the can. Fold it flat and crease the edges. And then mark those creases. Now meet those two creases together in the middle. Fold it flat and create two new creases and mark those creases. And meet these marks together, create new creases and mark those. And keep doing that until you've got 16 evenly spaced marks, like I've done this one. And now I'll slide this protractor on the can up to that 3 8 inch mark, and I can transfer these 16 evenly spaced marks to my line. And I'm going to drill mine at the drill press. There are other methods. You can use a handheld Dremel, a push pin, a handheld drill. Let's meet at the drill press. I use a simple drilling jig. It's a one by two with a couple of pieces of masonite screwed to the side just to hold the can in place. And I've adjusted the fence so my bit is three eighths of an inch down from the top. And I'm using a number drill bit. It is number 56. Normally I use a number 54, but with a smaller can, I can get by with smaller holes. And now I can cut the can into its component pieces. The bottom at 7 eighths of an inch, 
the top at one and an eighth inch and from the remainder of the middle section I'll be able to get this curved inner wall. If you've seen other videos of mine you've seen the Tim Can jig before and I've got a video showing how to make this jig. It's a wooden block that's movable up and down in a slot. Underneath the block is a hook blade. And I can rotate the can against that hook blade and it will score a line around the can so I can pop it apart. I had a suggestion from a viewer, Dennis Lamb. He thought it would be a good idea to have two movable blocks with two hook blades and score both lines at the same time. So I modified this jig to do that. The bottom block I've set at 7 eighths of an inch, cut the bottom. And the top one I set at 2 and 5 eighths of an inch. The can is three and three quarters of an inch tall. So setting this top one at two and five eighths will cut the top at one and one eighth of an inch. If you've loaned your Tim Can jig to a neighbor, haven't gotten it back yet, you may want to turn to your FM 21-76 again. Use a straight utility knife blade at page 1-9. Rotate the can against that straight blade and that will score a line and you can pop the can apart. For the top at one and one eighth of an inch, you'll need your FM 21-76 and a CD case. That will make the top one and one eighth of an inch. If you've got other books or other materials, just make sure and use those numbers. I'm gonna use the Tim Can jig. These hook blades in the video where I show how to make it, I give you the uh, on Amazon the resource where you can find the hook blades, but they come from Japan, so it takes about three or four weeks to get them. But they do a really nice job of scoring a line. There's little strippings of metal, of aluminum. I don't know if you can see that or not. So it actually removes metal. You want to feel the blade drag. And it's better to do too much than not enough. Dennis Lamb, this works really well. Well, I say that now, let's find out. Just that easy. In the center section, I'll cut in half. The top is going to fit over the bottom, so I'm going to need to stretch the top and I'll need to shrink the bottom by crimping the edge. I'll expand the top using another unopened can and a glove. To expand the top, use an unopened can angle this top piece over the bottom of the can and then press it on. But keep in mind, this is really thin aluminum, so it's going to be easy to split. This one I go really slow on. Don't push it on too far, it'd be really hard to get back off. But I'm trying to make, I don't know if you can see it, a raised ridge around the can that shows it's expanded. Now that probably won't be enough to let the top go over the bottom, so 
I'm going to shrink the bottom using a toothpick, a pointed toothpick. I'll put it on the table and I'll press down the bottom over the point of that toothpick to make an indent. And I'm going to make those indents all the way around the base, the bottom, about every quarter of an inch. So it looks like that. And now for the inner wall. I always make my templates. I, I make the paper pattern and then I transfer the paper pattern to this quarter inch or eighth inch even masonite or MDF because I make a lot of these alcohol stoves. To make a paper pattern, draw these two arcs with the radius of this larger one, 10 and three quarters of an inch, and the smaller radius, nine and three quarters of an inch. So this is a one inch tall inner wall, and it's six and a half inches long from point to point straight across. So 10 and three quarters inch for the larger arc, the radius, the smaller radius, it's nine and three quarters of an inch, and draw the arc. A paper pattern works just fine. I'll lay the template on that remaining aluminum and score around it with my utility knife. And now I should be able to just pop it out. Six and a half inches long, point to point gives me enough length I can overlap it three-eighths of an inch and where it overlaps that three-eighths of an inch I'll use scissors to cut a little nick and then fold up these little triangular corners just to hold it together And that's going to be a drain hole so alcohol can go from this inner chamber to this vaporization chamber between the two walls. I'm actually going to cut another one opposite of it with a hole punch. And now I can assemble. may need a little help with the last little bit so I use a shim and as you press them together make sure this inner wall stays behind this upper rim just like that The stove is finished, but I like to do some final finishing on it. I do mine at the lathe, so I'm going to polish up the body of it, and I'll polish the bottom also. Over at the lathe. There are various ways to shine up the body uh, using by hand steel wool or a polishing compound, a Dremel with a buffing wheel in it, or don't polish it at all. 
At the lathe, the way I do it, I've got a jam chuck, which is a tapered block of wood that fits in the open mouth of the stove. And I'll run it on a low speed. And I'll use steel wool to shine up the body. I've got my thumb on the end because it's easy for this to pop off. I'll also use steel wool on the bottom. And a drop of polishing compound on the leather fingertip of my glove. And then I'll buff it off with a microfiber cloth. Now we can test it out. I use either denatured alcohol or yellow bottle heat. I don't use rubbing alcohol or isopropyl. Rubbing alcohol and isopropyl alcohol make a sooty black residue on the bottom of your pots. It doesn't burn as efficiently. Usually takes about 30 seconds for these stoves to bloom and the alcohol to heat the stove up enough to where it starts coming out the jets. Not that long with a smaller stove though. There you go. Putting the pot down on the center will snuff out that center uh, flame that's just a waste of alcohol and we're good to go. There you go guys, a small juice can stove to add to your collection. Thanks for watching.